I just realized the cursor was put up on the hammers already. So that's where the hammers came from. Maybe? The hammers on of all different sizes hanging on the wall. Though some more like mallets. Mallets? Could that just as hammers have been designed using these as a model? Either way, all the hammers here have obviously seen a lot of use. They're all covered in debris and chalky stone powder. Wait. For some reason, this one hammer isn't dirty at all. And it's wet. Did someone wash it recently? The spotless hammer has been added to the truth bullet section of the handbook. It's a good thing we're searching this place immediately. Okay. This must have been... This gotta be... I think this... It's a dolly. It doesn't have a handle. I saw this in the art room before. I guess it's used to move statues around. It's kind of awkward, but if you bend down, it's not too hard to use. Huh? But wait. Wasn't it in the equipment room when we found Taka's body? It was! It was! And look at the wheel. There's a blood stain on it. So there is blood on the wheel of the dolly that was moved from the equipment room to the repository. And there's also a blood stain in the equipment room with trails... Uh, with the trails leading from the from the pool of blood. What's the explanation for that? Clearly, Taka's body was used. Uh, to Taka's body was put on there on the uh, on the dolly. It was used to carry his body here quickly. It's it's obvious. Let's see what else we can do here. TV? Anything? Nothing. Is there anything here? The camera. That's about it. I think we already checked out the camera before. Yep, checked out the camera before. Let's see what Ase uh, Asahina says about this. So, um... Hey, um, Makoto, I've been thinking about something. It's about the repository. Huh? What is it? Hmm. After Hifumi and Taka's body disappeared, we split up to look around, right? I was really scared. Sumi and Sakura stuck together. But... And we came right to the repository, too. You know, look around. When we got there, the repository was... <laughs> the repository was locked. We couldn't get inside. Yes! That is another thing. Who let... I smell f fish all over the place. That's a weird thing to say. I smell fish all over the place. I smell BS. No, that would be a weird thing to say as well. Somebody is botching this crime. Somebody is botching this crime. And I think maybe... Yeah, so hero might be out there frame for it. Or something. Something is something weird here. Something is definitely weird. We couldn't get inside. It was locked. Yeah, remember that. Mm. And we came here as soon as we started. As as soon as the search started, so there's no way someone could have beat us here. So if that's true. Then we locked it. And why is it even unlocked now? I wonder the same thing. The door was locked when the search for the bodies began, but now it's wide open. There might be some secret lurking in here, but I'll probably have to leave this area to figure it out. Okay, what else do we gotta look? Okay, let's talk to Sakura here. The many aspects of this incident this time. Too many to be honest. Considering that, it may be good to look back on everything that's happened. So then. Would you like my help? Yeah? Yeah, let's look back on things. Mm. This morning, only four of us met up at the dining hall. Hina, Kyoko, you and myself. We waited for the others, but nobody showed up. So we decided to look for them. Mm. It was around 8 o'clock when we began our search, and soon after we split up, Kyoko disappeared. Mm. After that, Hina found Celeste in the rec room on the third floor, and then quickly came and got you and me. According to Celeste, she was attacked by a suspicious individual and lay unconscious for about an hour. In other words, she was attacked an hour before we found her, meaning just after 7 o'clock. Yep. Mm. Based on the picture Celeste took, we discovered her attacker was dressed in a strange costume. It was Robo Justice. It also became clear that Robo Justice had dragged Hifumi away. Huh. After meeting up with Toko and Byakuya, we began searching for the costumed assailant. I found an injured Hifumi in the library on the second floor. We took him down to the nurse's office on the first floor, then resumed our search. But not long after leaving the nurse's office. 
What's wrong? I saw a shadow. Something moved around at the top of the stairs. Based on Celeste's claims, we went back to the second floor, where we split up and began searching. Then right after that, Celeste screamed. This time, she had apparently seen a suspect on the third floor. Hearing her screams, we quickly made our way to the third floor. Celeste, what's wrong? That was a rather intense scream for someone like you. I saw him, the strange costume man. He ran off as soon as I screamed. I was blocking the stairs, so he headed further down to the hallway and disappeared. Mm. And then... Yeah! Huh? W what was that? That came from downstairs. He must have been. Ifumi, he's in the nurse's office. This is bad. Come on, we have to go back. At that point, we decided to split up into two groups. Celeste, Hina and I went back to the nurse's office. Meanwhile, Yu, Byaku, and Toko pursued the suspect up to the third floor. And when we got back to the nurse's office, we found Ifumi's corpse, which is also when we heard the body discovery announcement play. I left Celeste and Hina alone and headed back to the third floor to tell the others what has happened. However, But at the same time, we had discovered Taka's body in the equipment room, which means Ifumi and Taka's bodies were discovered right around the same time. Because I remember hearing the body discovered announcement play right after finding Taka. And that's when I showed up and told you Byakuya that Hifumi had been killed, right? Then you, me and Byakuya all headed back to the nurse's office, leaving behind Toku who had fainted. But as soon as we left the physics lab, we ran to Celeste who just arrived to tell us something very unusual. Ifumi's body has disappeared. We hurried back to the nurse's office to discover that the corpse was, in fact, gone. Mm. They remembered we had abandoned the conscious Toko and rushed back to the equipment room. This can't be happening. Are we hallucinating all this or something? This time, Taka's body has disappeared. So from there, we began, on, we began our search for both the missing bodies. And after some mm. time, Celeste told us she found the bodies and we all headed to the repository. That's where we discovered the two bodies that had apparently vanished. I might have missed up some voices there, just saying. And that brings us to, up to now. However, Looking back, things have certainly been very active. If you want to look back at the case again, just let me know. I'm fine anytime. Thank god. That's a lot of events. See, everything here also kind of makes Celeste look very, very suspicious because it's very on character of her to react in the way she reacted. Right? I mean, think about it. It's extremely on character of her to scream. It's extremely on character of her to not keep her composure. I would think she'd be a little more composed. I mean, I know she's not, you know, she's not Kyoko. Pretty much practically stone cold and attentive. Or she's not Byakuya, who is just empathetic. But I mean, I would think that, you know, the ultimate poker face gal would, you know, have an ultimate poker face. I mean, I know she's ultimate gambler, but still, gamblers need a poker face. What about Byakuya? What does he think about this? Byakuya, do you know that... Uh, do, do you think he really, really did it? Hmm. I don't see how anyone could think otherwise. When the attacks and murders and disappearances all happened, every one of us had an alibi. And then the last thing Yifumi said when we died. Yeah, he said Hero's name. So in other words... Then there's no room to suspect anyone else. Okay, but if he did do it... Why would he hide his identity with that weird costume? Hmm. Maybe he thought that no matter what happened, he'd be safe as long as his face was covered. Because he's a fool of a century, you see. I mean, he is kind of dumb. But do you really think that's enough to explain it? I feel like there's a clue hiding in there somewhere. What? And, and is that it? That's all you. That's all that bothers you about this, the case? Well, no. There are a few other things. Like, why did the killer try to hide the bodies? Hmm. They probably figured that if he couldn't find the bodies, we can complete our investigation. But if that's the case, we found the bodies pretty easily, didn't we? <laughs> Again, it comes back to the fact that the culprit was a moron. Is that really all there is to it? The other thing that bothers me is, why did the why did they bother killing two people? What? Because all the rule says is, if you kill someone and get away with it, you graduate, right? If you're the killer, your number's one priority is not getting caught. But killing two people means more clues, more chances, you'll get found out. I see. Hold on. Perhaps. I see. 
So that's what that means. Is everything okay? That's enough. Don't talk to me as if we were friends. Huh? What's with the attitude? <laughs> but you have my appreciation. Goodbye. Thanks to you, I might have some fun with this after all. His mysterious words hung in the air as they left the repository. He talked as if he figured something out. But if he did, wouldn't it have killed him to tell would it have killed him to tell me what it was? He's on to something. I kinda trust Byakui in this case. Kinda wanna trust him personally. Okay, we should probably investigate the bodies here. Taka. He'll never move again. According to the Monokuma file, Taka died from a blow to the head. I found Justice Hammer 4 in, in the body in the equipment room. Is that what was used to kill him? And there's a tarp laid out under his body. Did the killer use this to move Taka's body? That way there would be there would be any blood left behind while the body was moved. Blue Topper has been added to the Truth Bullet section of the handbook. And Hifumi? How could somebody carry Hifumi up here, by the way? I mean, he is kind of hefty. Hifumi's big, cold body is laying on the floor. He's really big body. I mean, how on earth was the killer able to move someone so big? From the nurse's office where he was discovered to hear the repository. Yeah, that's three flights of stairs, extra several. All the way from the first floor to the third. And all without anyone noticing it. How the hell? It's no good. I just don't get it. I can think about it later. For now, I have to finish investigating Hifumi him himself. If I remember correctly, Hifumi's fatal injury was a blow to the head. Probably from Justice Hammer 3, which was laying on the floor in the nurse's office. Huh? Wait. Something's off about his body. Why am I getting this feeling? Something's different. Something about Hifumi's body in a nurse's office versus his body right now. That's it! His glasses! When his body was in the nurse's office, his glasses were covered with blood. But now, they're completely clean. Does that mean someone wiped his glasses off? But who would do that? And why? Hifumi's glasses have been added to the truth bullet section of the handbook. Whenever somebody probably moved his body, they probably touched the glasses and tried to wipe off any fingerprints on the glasses. Like, maybe? No, no, there gotta be some something about this. I don't think we have the technology to test fingerprints. Or really see, you know, just any fingerprints whatsoever. So there has to be a reason why they wiped the glasses. There's only one to find out. There's only one way in and out of this room. Through the door that Hina said was locked before. There's definitely a lock on the door, but it can only be locked from inside the repository. I don't see any way to lock it from the art room. Hmm. The door can be locked from the inside of the repository. Which makes me wonder. Hina and Sakura confirmed the door was locked after we started looking for the missing bodies. And the door is designed so that it can only be locked from inside the repository. In other words, when Hina checked it, someone had already gone in the repository and locked the door. When they were gone, they unlocked it and left. Which is why it's unlocked now. But Hina claims that there's no way someone could have beaten them to a repository. So that certain someone. Repository door has been added to the truth bullet section of the handbook. Hmm. There gotta be a clue around here somewhere. Maybe I should check somewhere else. Now, some places I already know about. First, the nurse's office where Hifumi was found, then the equipment room where Taka was found. I'm gonna just scan this real quick. There's nothing else we can check here. Let's go back up here. Oh. Okay. Let's be very thorough here now. Several things we can check out here. Is this a statue of Monokuma? Well, it has nothing to do with the case. Right, worth a try, though. Worth a try. The wall? The painting is lining on a wall. I don't see anything out of the ordinary about them. TV, I think we were checking out the TV before. The heck? There we go. What kind of monitor is this? Who would even make that kind of thing? It has Monokuma Cove written across it, because they covered all the details. So we gotta check this out here. It's a Venus statue. Seems like something you'll find in the art room. I don't think there's anything important here. What about the lockers back here? It's a locker. There's nothing to do remarkable about it. I guess there's nothing then. Statue of Neo. Nope. I'm trying to be very thorough here. 
Yep, nothing here, nothing here. No mind, no mind. Alright, let's leave the area for now. I wanna go back to the to this room here. To the science room. See if we can research a little bit more about it, the physics room. There we go. I figure out what is going on here. There has to be something I'm missing out. They gotta be. There has to be. Over here? The panels? This machine obviously had some kind of a purpose, but I don't know anything about physics to begin with, so I wouldn't have a clue where to start with this. A huge machine like this could really be just an air purifier? This just seems silly. It does, actually. It really does. Cabinets? I must use this for physics experiments and stuff. It's not really related to the case, though. Is there anything on the other side here? Hello? Oh, it's a camera, no mind. Alright, let's go to the door again. Let's check in here real quick. See if you can find something. There's a tarp. Let's talk to Genesis Jack first. I was sleeping right here when the killer carried the body away. I'm super pissed I missed such an ultimate, ultimately rare event. She's gonna be useless. I got more tarp here. Huh? This tarp. I feel like I've seen something somewhere before. Just recently, too. We have seen it before. Alright, anything here? The blood stain. That's what we need to investigate here. There's some kind of a tire mark going through the pool of blood in the middle of the room. That reminds me about the dolly in the repository. There was blood on its tire. Could that blood have come from here? Which could mean that Taka's body was moved from the equipment room to the repository using the dolly. Both rooms are on the third floor, so that should definitely have been possible. The equipment room blood scene has been added to the truth bullet section of your handbook. But even if the dolly was used to move Taka's body, what about Hifumi? Fuma's body was in the nurse's office on the first floor. Even with a dolly, there's no way to get it up to the third floor. This that's still a total mystery. He, I, I gotta I gotta let you guys know ahead of time, just the thought process that I have had for some time about this when the case was started. No, never mind, I can't. I if, I would say it, but now that I think about it, it would be false, so I'm gonna keep it to myself for now, unless there's more clues to back up my theory, so I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna let the cat out of the bag just yet. It's nothing, it's nothing concrete, it's just things I'm pulling out of my ass to see if I can figure something out, that's it. Alright, let's check the hammer here. Just as hammer 4, the weapon was used to... Well, apparently I skipped accidentally, sorry. The body was moved, but the murder weapon was just left here. Alright. Leave the equipment room for now. Nothing else we can find here. Let's leave the area for now. I need some water real bad. So. There are some major clues on what happened. First of all, hammers are missing. A lot of the hammers that is similar to the Justice hammers was cleaned recently. We have both Ifumi and Taka that are dead, died in two side, you know, two opposite sides of the the school building. Really, well, two. I mean, first floor and third floor, really far away from each other. Taka was moved after Taka was killed. He was moved using the dolly and a tarp to over to the repository. But Ifumi, for some reason, his dust is working completely clean. In the and nobody knows how the hell he was moved. To be honest, because he's he's pretty he's a burly guy. He's a very very burly guy. It would be kind of, you know, hard to move them and everything. So far from evidence we've seen uh, pictures of the Justice Robot holding on to Ifumi. The people that are suspicious right now for me personally are Yasuhiro, Kyoko. Well, we should probably trust Kyoko, but still, she's such an enigma, so... By default, I have to keep her as a an enigma, you know, treat her as, treat her as what she is. She's kind of an enigma, so we can't really fully trust her as much as I would want to. And then there's Celeste, who was the only person present during any of the any of the events happening. She was the kind of person that was like to report to us what is going on and lead us around left and right. I feel like maybe she might have something to do with this. Maybe 
chair was moved. I don't know. Let's check everything from left to right here. Okay. First of all, locker. It's a locker. It doesn't seem especially important right now. Well, man, I wanted to check it out. What's this? Maybe it's just for decoration or something. It's not really related to the case, though. Still, might as well check. It's a shelf full of magazines. There's all kinds of magazines here. What about the chair? Was it moved? A couch. There's nothing here, but I really need to. There's nothing here I really need to worry about. Never mind. What about this here? A dartboard. It's not really related to the case, though. I need to check everything. Gosh, Makoto. So rude. <laughs> Trying to be very thorough about this, alright? Oh, still getting used to the controller. Check the table here. A pool table. Now I'm going to do. <laughs> case. Copy of Othello here. It's not really related to the case. Table? Table here. It's kind of small to the desk in the classroom, but it's kind of not. Not the related to the case either. What else we got here? We got the just camera, TV, and a door. And the hammer over there. We go ahead and get it real quick. Celeste. Was she really attacked with this? Just as hammer one? But what the heck is with this thing? I guess there's nothing much we can find here. We should probably check the other floors then. To be as thorough as possible. Alright. So now that we're here, there are two classrooms we should investigate just in case. Just make sure we clear our rounds and everything like that, you know? Make sure we've been very thorough. Hey guys, how's it going? My name is Sam Rio. Welcome to Blah Blah Blah. Hello, what have we got here? Hello, ladies. How's it going? Breasts are the treasure of the I kind of want to say you could dress better. <laughs> Ha <laughs> <laughs>